Okay, well, here we are back uh, after I've dug the, uh, the hole and the trench for the uh, valve cover box and the, uh, and the tubing that uh, is basically the entrance to the, to the nest. As you can see, uh, this is 4-inch Corex tubing, and I drilled a 4-inch, a little over a 4-inch hole. I did a stencil, made a stencil for that so that I, you know, I could cut that out really so it fit pretty tight. But then I took some, uh, some of this called Gorilla Tape. It's like really heavy-duty electrical, black electrical tape. And I put some of that around the Corex uh, to cover the grooves and make it fit a little tighter. And I put another piece of tape right over that. So this is all dug out so that this fits right in there. And it's pretty level. And the next thing I did was I drilled a hole in the lid and just big enough for this 2-inch PVC pipe. See, that comes through the bottom. I had to taper that a little bit to get it to, you want it to fit real snug because you don't want that to leak water. If you want to, you can put some sealant around it also. And that allows for your video cam. roof fits right on there. This sticks up above your the soil. And then if you happen to have one of these uh, Hawkeye Nature Cams and you want to see what's inside the nest box without opening it up, all you got to do is uh, rig this Nature Cam up so that you can drop it down in the, the two-inch pipe. And it's got a you can get these with up to 100 feet of cord on it. You can hook it up to your camcorder. And you can watch what's going on in the nest box without having to... This goes right down to the 2-inch PVC pipe. And then you can turn it around in there. Mount this on a stick. You can turn it around in there and you see what's going on without having to dig the, dig the box up. So that's how that works. And then what I'll do is I'll put a cap on this so that it's watertight without uh, when I'm not using the nest cam. So they, that's the basic setup there. Um, you got the nest box, you got the Corex tubing, and then at this end of the Corex is where the six-inch cinder block comes in, and you just. Uh, put the end of the tube in there to help stabilize it. And then when you fill this in with dirt, this it'll cover you'll cover this whole thing. And another important thing with uh, with this end, I've got mine facing to the east because most of the storms come from the west and the north here. So you want to make sure that this isn't set up so that water can get into it and run down into the into the nest box. So the way the entrance pipe is here, it comes up from the nest box and it comes up over a little hill and then levels out here. So that even if water gets in the entrance, it can't run down into the box. And then the other thing you'll want to do, and I haven't done this yet, is you'll want to dig a little trench in front of this so that you yeah, have any water runoff. And once this is all graded, in other words, once the soil is put back in here, there'll be a little mound where the 2-inch uh, PVC is. And then you put a little trench in front of this part of the entrance, and the water won't run in there no matter what. So, so that's it. That's the way you build yourself a burrowing owl nest. Uh, if you have really hard soil, I suggest you hire a backhoe to dig the, the hole for you because it took me a lot of hours with this rocky soil. You can see all the rocks over here. So I'm just going to backfill this in, uh, make a little mound here where the this is. The burrowing owls like to sit on top of a mound and survey the area. Um, come to my website, thebirdersreport.com, and I've got a lot of information there for you. I've got the plans for this and several other nest uh, boxes for different species of birds and lots of other information. So come and visit and have a great birding day.